I used to have Sjogren syndrome, and now I'm 100% cured just one month later. And what's so interesting about this case study, besides it being about myself, when normally it's about clients of mine, is that I wasn't even the one to diagnose this. You see, I've been dealing with symptoms of Sjogren's for such a long period of time that I've effectively become accustomed to dealing with it, and I didn't think anything of it. It wasn't until viewers of my channel noticed that I just was not blinking in my videos. And this led Dr. Ali Moslem, who I work with closely at the Peptide Science Institute, to ask me a series of questions and immediately diagnose me with Sjogren syndrome. So what's so exciting about this case study is the fact that I was able to reverse all of the symptoms of Sjogren syndrome in a period of just one month by following a precision-based peptide protocol, which I put together for myself. Now, I stayed on this protocol for an additional month just to be assured that there was sufficient immune system reprogramming. But even since I've been off this protocol for a full month, I have not gone into experiencing any symptoms. So it's in full remission, and that is quite incredible in my view. So I wanted to share this case study with you. Now, I'm not going to be reading directly from this document. I'm sort of just reciting from memory and explaining how I was able to cure Sjogren's syndrome. But looking back, I did have reduced tear production, dry eyes. I had a chronically dry mouth, which even developed into a fear of choking on food if I didn't have a glass of water nearby. So very little saliva production. And yet I never took the time to even consider what was going on with my body. And like I said, that's because it's just been going on for such a long period of time. And the fact that I'm so busy taking care of other clients and working at the Peptide Science Institute that I rarely take time to consider these things for myself when I really should have. So I am very familiar with Sjogren's syndrome because my grandmother suffered from the disease and she actually went on to develop a dementia from it. And that is because Sjogren's syndrome is associated with a greatly increased risk of dementia, but that's not the only association with Sjogren's syndrome. As Ali was telling me, it not only can affect your cognition, but it can affect your liver as well. And this is because in about 20% of Sjogren's cases, uh, someone develops these anti-mitochondrial antibodies, which can attack a specific part of the mitochondria in the bile ducts in the liver, which can not only destroy the liver and compromise its function, which leads to uh, impaired ability to detoxify the blood, toxins which can build up in the blood, which can affect cognition negatively and mood as well, and also can negatively affect various hormone conversions in the body. But the effect that it has on the liver can carry on downstream to the pancreas and the gallbladder as well because bile secretion is impaired. And this can put you at a greater risk of pancreatitis, for instance, which my father had when he was exactly my age. And this led to him having lifelong complications as a result because he's only living with a small portion of his pancreas. And Ali reminded me the importance of addressing Sjogren's syndrome very quickly before it potentially progresses into something far worse. Now, I did do a genomic risk prevention and enhancement service on myself, which is something we offer for our clients here, and I did see that I had an elevated risk of Sjogren's syndrome and primary biliary cirrhosis, or sometimes called primary biliary choncolitis, which is the condition I just explained regarding the anti-mitochondrial antibodies, which can attack the bile ducts in the liver. But yet I never put together an actual protocol to address or reduce my risk of suffering from any of these symptoms. So very fortunately, you know, I just got some blood work and I did not have a compromised liver function, but yet I was still dealing with some symptoms of Sjogren's, uh, including potentially a relation to a subclinical hypothyroidism, which I was dealing with. I had a TSH of about 2.6, that's thyroid stimulating hormone, when uh, ideally, you know, this would be closer to one or low ones. Uh, but despite this, you know, most doctors would ignore a 2.6 TSH and think nothing of it. Uh, but that is not me because we are going for total optimization here. And so without getting off track, I just wanted to cover what I was actually experiencing in addition to the chronically dry mouth, the dry eyes, the impaired tear secretion. And this includes 
uh, occasional dry skin, which was affecting mostly my upper chest and my shoulders. And it was quite rare and mild, but it was still occurring. And I would get this occasional airway inflammation if I went outside or go for a run and did not warm up prior to doing so. Now, I just attributed this to either low humidity outside or pollutants in the environment. But what was actually happening was this inflammatory cytokine infiltration in my diaphragm, which would sometimes cause a burning or a tightness in my diaphragm. Didn't always happen, uh, but it was a symptom which turned out to be associated with Sjogren's syndrome. And rarely I would experience a brain fog, which I mainly attributed to burnout or just being overworked because I put in a lot of hours at the Peptide Science Institute and spend a lot of time and care on my clients. And so sometimes I don't get as much sleep as I should. Now, when we were discussing actual uh, treatment options, Allie and I, which is something we do for most of our clients at the Peptide Science Institute. So whether Ali is going to coach one or I am going to coach one, we often discuss a patient's overall symptoms and condition with each other uh, just to make sure that we are putting together the best approach possible for that person. Well, Ali suggested that I follow a highly specific and comprehensive dietary strategy to help regulate my immune system. Now, this is something that we have used for some clients who have autoimmune conditions in the past, but it's always accompanied with lifestyle optimizations, supplements, peptides, and sometimes even devices. So uh, diet changes are just one small part of a program, but a part nonetheless. And I am just so busy and I'm actually traveling overseas at the moment, and I have been for the past several months that it just felt like a major inconvenience to be changing up my diet a significant extent right now. So instead, I utilized everything I know about autoimmune con conditions, uh, Sjogren's syndrome, and as well as its root causes. And I wanted to put together a precision-based peptide protocol in an attempt to reprogram my immune system so that it's no longer attacking my exocrine glands. So I put together four specific peptides that were administered orally each day. However, there's actually one naturally occurring peptide in the body whose levels are highly correlated with autoimmune diseases. And so increasing this peptide can actually lower auto antibodies in various autoimmune diseases, including Hashimoto's, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, and so on. However, I don't want to recommend this specific peptide in the video without providing significantly more context because I do not like implementing this specific peptide in the long term at high dosages chronically unless someone's genes actually show that they have a significantly decreased production of this peptide. It's something that we can screen for very easily with our genomic risk prevention and enhancement service. However, if somebody just has a mild deficiency of this peptide, there are actually ways to increase its production endogenously without direct supplementation. And I think I will cover this in my Peptide Mastery course update that I have planned coming later this month, as well as in my book, which I am releasing this month as well. Because in the book and the course, I am able to provide much more context on how you can use this peptide. The last thing I want is somebody to get hurt from using it improperly uh, by means of me not covering it extensively enough in this case study. So if you're interested, you will have to either get the course or the book or if you have the course, wait for the update. Now, getting into the results section here, within just two weeks, I noticed a significant improvement, and within one month, I was completely symptom-free. In fact, my saliva production increased so much that it became slightly annoying, and I actually want to share a comment I made to Allie with you guys, which is something my business partners didn't think I should share, just because it makes it sound as if beating showrooms is like a bad thing, but it's not. So, I sort of miss Sjogren's. I have too much saliva production now, and it's kind of annoying. But like I said, it's very good that I address this, and I will adjust to the increased saliva production and hopefully have prevented many significant, potentially, conditions which could have occurred as a result of not treating it. So my eyes became properly lubricated. My vision improved. I no longer had blurry vision in the morning. And my occasional skin dryness and my airway inflammation also completely resolved. And what's very important to me is that if these symptoms happen to return again, I have the exact tools and knowledge to knock it back out into remission immediately. And so after treatment, I could eat any food without water. I don't have a fear of choking anymore. My natural blinking pattern returned. I have no more dry skin, no more airway inflammation, no more occasional brain fog. My life is back. So 
Ali reminded me a very important lesson here. Not only is Sjogren's syndrome strongly associated with primary biliary cirrhosis or primary biliary chondylitis, which can lead to pancreatic dysfunction, neurological decline, and so on, which, by the way, many autoimmune conditions have a very high correlation to a high level of mitochondrial heteroplasmy, which is something we can also screen for in our genomic risk prevention and enhancement service. What is a high degree of mitochondrial heteroplasmy? Well, it involves multiple different types of mitochondrial DNA in your body. So normally your mitochondrial DNA is inherited maternally, that is from your mother's side, and not paternally. Well, in cases of a high degree of mitochondrial heteroplasmy, you may have inherited some paternally as well, or it could have just gone back in germline uh, throughout many of your ancestors. But if you have this, not only are you a uh, potential candidate for an autoimmune condition, uh, it does put you at higher risk, but it could also compromise your overall mitochondrial functioning as well. And so this is something that we would want to actively and proactively address if it is the case with you. Now, this also taught me just because you can adapt to something uh, doesn't mean you should live with it. And also, the longer you ignore an autoimmune or inflammatory condition, the more damage that occurs. We actually had one client, by the way, who traveled the world seeing various different experts in various different countries trying to get treatment for a set of symptoms that they were having. And not only have they failed to get a diagnosis, but they failed to get an effective treatment and their disease progressed to a very bad stage. And by the time they came to us, it was quite severe. And it takes a lot to reverse damage of that extent compared to addressing something early on. So please, if you are dealing with any type of issue, do not ignore it. We can definitely help you with it. And if we can't, we won't even bother to take you on as a case. And I also learned that despite our ability to help others, uh, we often neglect to apply the knowledge to ourselves to take care of ourselves. And in my case, this is just because I am so busy, but going forward, I am going to take better care of myself. And so there's always hope, no matter if you have a condition uh, which you've been dealing with for a long period of time, whether or not it's diagnosed, whether or not you've tried various treatments, you know, your condition can respond remarkably well to the right treatment approach. That really is all it takes. And so if you want a complete health transformation, just visit peptides.link slash transformation. And we are excited to work with you. So thank you for watching this case study. If you know somebody who is dealing with Sjogren's syndrome, please share the case study with them. Please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will talk to you later. This has been Brennan Henry, the world's leading expert in peptide science, and I hope you have a great night. Take care.